Hello, Fuji. I want to play a game. So far, in what could loosely be called your life, you've made a living watching others. Society would call you an informant, a rat, a snitch. I call you unworthy of the body you possess, of the life that you've been given. I want to play a game. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, it's me, Prashana, here on Modern Midlifers again. We're going to do a film test today. Uh, we're going to compare film negatives. Uh, we're going to compare namely Color Plus 200, Gold 200, and Fuji 200. We're not comparing the C200, but the Fuji 200. We've have, we have an elaborate setup here, uh, proudly sponsored by 8 Story Trees location. Um, so let's see uh, what we get and let's see how the film compares. All right, so our testing methodology is quite elaborate, as I was saying. Uh, we have a color chart checker here. Uh, we have placed the film that we're testing right here as well, so there is no confusion. So we have a Nikon F3. Uh, it's placed on mirror lockup with a shutter release cable here. Then we have this uh, dome light that is daylight balanced. I really don't know much about lights, uh, but yeah, we have a light that's controlled. <laughs> we're going to try to shoot six stops above and under um, in this scene and then probably we'll take some photos of myself or person with darker skin tone and Ian as well for someone who's of a lighter skin tone. All right, so for the next uh, series of photos, we're gonna take the exposure latitude of the film in tungsten balanced light. Uh, we put a color checker there, we put the film roll there, there as well and then we're gonna see how the images pan out. Uh, so let's see what our results are. Yeah, okay. so interestingly that day I went out to shoot, uh, there was another video I did. Mm -hmm. So I just bought the Kodak uh, Fuji 200. Ah. So I went to shoot it, then I was expecting it to be a little different from gold, but then when I got the pictures back, it looked exactly like what gold produced. Yeah, so actually there's uh, rumours in the market that Fujifilm has not been producing their usual C200. Anymore. Anymore, yeah. yeah so what has been happening is uh, it's... The, the production of 200 ISO film, for Fujifilm at least, has been offloaded to Kodak. And actually, if you look at the canisters and all that, it yeah, looks a bit different. Yeah, it, it, it looks exactly <laughs> like Kodak. So I, I think this video is just to put all rumours to a rest. Uh, we're going to see whether there is any difference or if you're just wasting money buying more expensive film. So I guess we can give a TLDR before yeah. we go into the uh, yes. uh, detailed explanations. Okay, so we'll so, just show you this photo where yeah. a TLDR photo. Okay, so this one here. Yeah. Okay, so we have all three colour film stocks here. Uh, the first row is shot in actually daylight balanced. The first photo here is actually Kodak Color Plus. The second is Kodak Go. And the third is Fujifilm 200. And this repeats in series. The second row is actually tungsten balanced film. Uh, we also took some portraits. So Ian is of a lighter skin tone, so I thought uh, he'd make a good uh, candidate for this. And I'm of a darker skin tone, so we took a, dark, uh, a portrait with darker skin tones as well. Yeah, so and, the whole image is here. Uh, you can pause the video and zoom in. Yeah, and I think it will yeah. tell you uh, everything. Yeah. Um, if you ask me, uh, I, my, my summary is very simple. I think just buy the film that's the cheapest or most readily available to you. Because honestly, I see very, very little difference between Fujifilm 200 and a Kodak Go. Uh, both seem to be slightly better in terms of uh, handling uh, images than Color Plus, but it's so marginal that honestly, unless you're comparing like what we're doing side by side, you probably can't tell the difference. Yeah, but let, let, why don't we go into a bit more detail, yep. okay, so for those who are a bit more keen to see why we say this. So uh, let's start with the daylight balanced images. So actually, we did extensive testing. We actually shot every shot from plus six here, okay, overexposed. And then we just went down the range all the way down to minus six. Minus six, okay, yeah. so we'll start at plus six. Yeah. So this is um, roughly how film will handle. When it's overexposed yeah. by this much. So as you overexpose, of course, you capture more detail in the shadows. Uh, and I think a lot of people, they do recommend overexposing film, but not by six stops, yeah. okay? Uh, so, 
Uh, overexposing, I just want to highlight, is different from uh, pushing or pulling film. Pushing or pulling is actually a developmental process. So if, let's say, you shoot or rate the film at a higher or lower ISO than what it's intended for, then you're supposed to compensate it through development. Here, we're just overexposing and underexposing. So we're just developing it as per normal C41. Um, shout out to Wampo Color Center. Okay, they did an excellent job developing this. We told them just to keep all the settings as similar as possible. Uh, and I think they did a great job actually developing the film. They sent us the, the JPEGs. I know ideally you should probably scan it in TIFF and then I probably should scan it myself yep. to uh, keep everything consistent. But this is actually consumer film, so I don't think we need to go into such details. So anyway, we shot it as how you would shoot it yourself because I don't think many people develop themselves. They don't control everything. Yeah. You just send it to a lab and get the lab to scan it. Now. Yeah, so there's actually a lot of variables at play. The colours you see on your screen might also vary from what we see on our screen because it's really subject to the colour space of your screen, yep. uh, what the, the, how it was processed and a lot of other factors as well. So uh, I, I guess you just have to take our word for it. Uh, we will probably link, down the, link the actual images down below in the comments or uh, the, the, the comments of the, the video and you can have a look and make your own conclusions as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so at plus six, I think the image tends to degrade quite a fair bit actually. Actually, I would say the you, you can still distinguish the stops of uh, grey on the colour chart over there. Mm. Uh, but there seems to be some severe colour shifting. Yeah, so the, the colours shift quite a bit. Actually, if yeah. you look at the yellow on the bottom here, near the Polaroid Go down here, you'll notice the yellows become a bit harder to discern from yeah. one another. La. Yeah. But actually at plus five, and plus four, this uh, remains, okay? Mm. But you, at plus three, I think that's where is kind of the maximum. the maximum. So now you realize actually that yellow that I was referring to is actually a very light green, you know? Yeah, so one is like a greenish tone rather than yellow. Yeah. But as you get higher and higher, they just become the same thing. Yeah, they become very similar. It becomes yeah. harder and harder to discern from one another. Then actually, if you look at the spec sheet for Kodak Go, uh, you'll notice that the film is suggested to be either shot between uh, plus 3 uh, or minus 2. Mm. So actually, at plus 3, that's where I think it's the safe upper limit. Anything higher than that, you're probably losing some colours or the, the, the film starts to degrade a bit or it's not capturing as much. Of course, all these are creative endeavours. Yeah. So if it's a certain look you're going for and you like the, uh, the overexposed look, then by all means, go, go ahead. Because at the end of the day, it's your, your images. If you're happy, that, that's all mat that uh, matters, right? I mean, yeah. it's your art. If you want it to look like this, you want these kind of colours and this kind of washed out image, I mean, it's nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah. I guess some would say yeah. this also looks Filmic, yeah. whatever that means, like you know. Filmic or yeah. vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has that vibe to yeah. it. Um, of course, if we look at all the way down, okay, as you go down below three, I think the colors become a bit more vibrant, okay. They uh, become definitely more accurate. Yes, and it, it becomes a bit more contrasty. Yeah. The grain also starts to appear a bit more obviously yeah. in these images. Uh, when we start talking about underexposure, that's when I think you can go as far as minus two safely. And the colors still hold up pretty well, you know. Mm. Uh, the colors are pretty still accurate, you know. Uh, the shadows aren't really being crushed too much, okay. But once you go minus three EV, that's I think when things get a bit more uh, crushed, okay. You start losing yeah. detail. But same thing again, it's an artistic thing. You like it, you shoot it you're happy with it, then uh, I think uh, there's no one else you can complain to. But, but I would say if you go beyond three, right, yeah, it starts to get funky. The colours totally shift again. Yeah. And then... Uh, and at five just, yeah. and uh, six, things start getting uh, becoming unusable. Yeah. Even at actually minus three, uh, if you look carefully, the like the purple here, it almost looks like it's black in colour. Yeah. Yeah, so you see purple is very clear at minus two down here near the Polaroid Go, but once we go to minus three, it almost becomes completely black. So this is just something for you to note. Uh, what we did is we did this with the Color Plus as well. Uh, I'm not going to show it to you here because they all look the same. They all look more yeah. or less the same. La. So we, but we should do have the summary one. Ah, okay. I think the summary one yeah. uh, highlights the, the exposure limits well. Yeah. So the top row is everything shot at plus three EV. 
the middle row is everything shot at the ideal uh, exposure. Uh, by the way, the ideal exposure was metered on a Nikon F3. It was corroborated by a Seconic uh, 408 light meter as well. And we use a uh, daylight balanced light like what we have right here mm -hmm. today. So it's as accurate, as controlled as it can be. Lah. Yeah. Uh, most film shooters, they don't go to this extent. Uh, it's a bit crazy. But I think we just were very, very curious. And we just wanted to, you know... There are so many rumors flying around here and yeah, there. Yeah. People say it's different. People say it's the same. Some people say it has a different feel. We just want to put all rumors to rest. And I think if you look at these images carefully, you'll notice there's very, very little difference. Uh, but there is very slight difference between, I would say, the Kodak Gold and the Color Plus. Kodak Gold and Fujifilm 200 are more or less, I would say, the same film. Okay. So if you want to check it out, you can zoom in um, to the color charts and then you can compare it for yourself. Mm. So this one and this one, it's basically it the, same. the same. Yeah. But let's say if uh, actually Kodak Go and I think Fujifilm is a tad sharper, uh, of course there could be errors in our focus point. But let's say we look at, let's say the back here, you look at the threading. This is actually Kodak Go. The threading is quite uh, detailed. The color checker is also quite sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, if you compare it to the Fujifilm 200, I would say it's very similar, maybe a bit softer. Uh, but if you compare it to the Color Plus, it is quite a fair bit softer actually. You know? So it almost looks like it's out of focus, but actually it was With, the same. Yeah, it was the same. And if you compare yeah. it to other objects in the image, it looks the same as well. So actually it's sharp, but it's just soft. Yeah, the, I think the film yeah. just lacks a relative sharpness. Yeah. But honestly, unless you're you know, putting these images side by side, if you're looking at it from a social distance like what we're doing here on yeah. a screen like this, unless you zoom in, you really cannot tell the difference. Uh, Grain-wise, I would say all of them are very similar with Color Plus being slightly noticeable. Uh, of course, this is also very imperceptibly small. You really have to like zoom in into the areas mm -hmm. and you have to really compare, okay? Uh, the grain, I would say, is a bit more noticeable in the Color Plus. Kodak Go is less, and Kodak Go is very similar to Fuji Film 200, you know. Uh, highlights, shadows, all look the same. If you look at the underexposed images on the bottom there, they were all shot at minus 2 EV. Uh, this was the lower limit uh, indicated by not just the Kodak Gold uh, data sheet, but also by the Fuji Film data sheet. And if you look at the color cast and all that, it, it's almost the same, you know, uh, practically the same. There could be some variances because of how maybe we white balanced or maybe just the exposure at the film developer. Yeah. But honestly, these are so minute, I don't think it really matters at this point anymore because we've kept all the variables as consistent as we could. Okay, so now we'll move on to the tungsten, tungsten ones. Yeah. So, I think we did we did basically the same thing for the tungsten yeah. images. We went through plus six, minus six. So let's uh, just let it load. So for tungsten uh, balanced images, the technical data sheet actually suggests that you shoot it at ISO 50. So that's two stops over. But they also suggest you put the filter on. So Correct. I, so to account for that. Yeah, so actually when you put a ATA filter, you know, it reduces light by two stops. Yeah. So basically you're back at zero. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, but personally, I feel in darker environments, overexposing by maybe a stop is ideal. So uh, if you look at like the overexposed image here at plus 6 EV, I think you've uh, lost a fair bit of detail here and there. But so you lost a lot of colour also. Yeah, you lost a lot of colour. Because, you know, in a tungsten environment, things tend to have a little more, you know, orange hues yeah. to it, you know. So, uh, on, but at 4 plus 4 EV, I think it is still respectable. You know? I mean, it's usable. Yeah, it's usable. Yeah. Uh, but I think the, the colours are more or less okay. Of course, for me personally, I like the plus, sorry. I like the plus one EV. Okay. I think not much shadow detail is lost. Colours are still remaining as they mm. should, you know. If you look at the colour checker at the side, there at the, on the bottom, sorry, you will notice that all the colours seem to be quite accurately reproduced. Uh, just a side note, uh, since we didn't mention it earlier, in each photo, right, we have secretly put in the, the film stock there as well. So if, let's say, you're looking at an image and you're not really sure, you can either look for that 
or you can just look at the corner here. We've labeled everything. I've triple checked everything, but you know, errors do occur. I hope yeah. I didn't make anything. If, if I did make an error, you can just write it down below. I'm sure someone will point it out to us. <laughs> yeah. Then as we start underexposing the images, I feel at minus one EV, we still have a relatively decent image. The purple on the color checker still has some hues of purple, I would say, but at minus two, I think... So interestingly, right, yeah. by underexposing the image, right, we are not getting any highlight details back also. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's still blown. Yeah, it's And still... it's just like, it's, it's a bit darker. Mm, mm, mm. So so it's not like you, you are improving the dynamic range by underexposing. Yeah, it's still yeah. the same. Yeah. To be fair, also, we, yeah. we scanned it all in uh, JPEG, yeah. but if you look carefully, from minus one to minus two, there's suddenly a huge color cast difference. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas this isn't so obvious between, you know, minus one to mm. zero uh, and so forth. Like, all the I, way... I would say plus one, minus one, not significant. Uh, yeah, in terms yeah, of color. yeah, yeah. I, 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 would, I would agree with that. Yeah. Then minus two onwards, the image just tends to degrade. But yeah. of course, it adds to a certain mood as well. So, so interestingly, right? Um, as we underexpose, we are not getting back the detail in the little diorama thing with the mm. tiny cameras, mm. which is interesting because it's still blown up. Yeah, it, it could be that the maybe the contrast ratio yeah. is too high, but I I don't think so. The the room yeah. was quite because you, you well. see even at like minus five. Eh? No, I think this one the diorama switched okay. off. Yeah, but down here. It, yeah, we still don't get any detail there. Yeah, so I think this is just something for you to note. Yeah. Uh, and this is similar throughout all the different uh, film stocks. So we did it for the other film stocks as well. We'll link it down below. Like yeah, you if can... you want to have a look, but we looked at it and yeah. it's almost the same. I already gave you my TLDR, yeah. like, just buy whatever is the cheapest. So this yeah. is a summary, again, similar to the earlier one we did, but this is all the tungsten yeah. balanced uh, images. So the top row is everything at plus 4 EV. The middle is everything at plus 1 EV. And the bottom is everything at minus 1 EV. Uh, and on the left, you have the whole column of the color plus images. The middle is all the Kodak Go. Mm. And uh, on your right will be all the Fujifilm 200. So honestly, at this, when looking at this, if you ask me, and I looked at each row by row, I really cannot tell you which film stock is what, you know? All of them look very similar. If you zoom in on the color checker on each spot, they seem to be similar as well. Mm. Okay. Um, even so, down here. So look. something interesting, right? Mm. Um, for films, uh, there's no point underexposing actually because if you look at it, right, when you underexpose, you don't gain any highlight detail back. But you just lose a lot of uh, shadow color also. Yeah. So I think this is something where a lot of film shooters, yeah. they recommend... If in doubt, just overexpose yeah. the, the image slightly and that would be a lot safer than underexposing yeah. it. Um, after these, uh, these shots, actually, we, we did a shot of ourselves okay, with the color checker as well. So all the shots on the left are all the color plus, all the shots in the middle are go, and all the shots on the right are Fujifilm 200. If you notice for the EV value, I felt that for lighter skin tones, keeping it at a zero EV was ideal. Uh, this could be just a result of how our light meters tend to expose because they tend to like to pull everything to a neutral gray. And that's why for my darker skin tone, actually I chose the images that were minus one EV. So if you look at the images, uh, especially like here, you can see like my highlights aren't blown out, you know? Uh, if we use an actual image to compare, let's... This is, this, this, this is Fujifilm, okay? This is where mm. I'm at zero, uh, and this is plus one. I think the highlights are getting blown ever so slightly. Uh, my skin tone is... Uh, you can't really see the gradation in color, mm. la, you know? It's becoming too light on one end. Whereas at minus one, I think the, the color gradient is a bit more distinct, you know? Also, one thing is that um, because we fixed the exposure, uh, we were standing in front of the, the scene, so yeah. we might be slightly like, brighter. Yeah, we might be slightly yeah. overexposing as well. But I guess a good reference point is always your color yeah. chart checker. La, you know? So you look at minus one here versus, versus the zero here, you can see very little difference. Like you can compare them, the top and bottom, mm. very little difference. Top and bottom, very little difference. Another thing you might notice is if you look at my face, it does look a little bit softer on the color plus, mm -hmm. you know? So I think the film by nature is just not as sharp, you know? 
uh, Gold seems to be very sharp. Uh, Fujifilm 200 seems to be very sharp. They look identical between Fujifilm 200 and Gold, so I think that settles the debate. Yeah, yeah. There's no significant difference. Any difference might be in the scanning, developing. I, I think even if you develop at a different developer, you might get different results even. Yeah. Or, or you yeah. scan at a different place. Yeah. We could actually send the negatives to different yeah. people and we probably get different uh, yeah. white balance, auto white balance, auto exposure yeah. and all this. That's why we created this mega chart for those who really want a pixel peep. So this is the TLDR one. Yeah. Uh, we'll put a link somewhere so you can download it. Mm. So this has it. everything at zero EV. Uh, you can just compare each shot to one another. There will be very slight variances, but I think we account this for just like uh, yeah. white balance uh, and all that. Uh, honestly, if you are editing your photos, there'll be zero difference. Okay, you can probably circumvent it because the difference is so marginal. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the differences are so marginal. Even if you edit and add like tiny bit of contrast, right? They will look so different already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so honestly, like this is, uh, I created another chart yeah. with what I considered the idealized exposures. So for me, if you ask me how should I shoot these three film stocks, I would suggest that just to be on the safe side, especially if you're going to shoot in mixed lighting environments, mm. I would suggest you overexpose uh, and shoot at ISO 100, okay. all three film stocks. That way, regardless of whether you're indoors, outdoors, light skin, dark skin, mostly everything should be all right. But let's say if you're going to shoot predominantly dark skin tones, then maybe sticking to zero or minus one might be a bit more ideal, you know? Yeah. But other than that, my recommendation is very simple. Just see which film stock is available to you firstly and which is the most affordable. Uh, if you look at the technical data sheets for Fujifilm 200 and Kodak Gold, they are more or less almost the same. Uh, surprisingly, there is no technical data sheet for Color Plus. I searched on Google for like an hour. I couldn't find anything. Some people were postulating that actually Color Plus is the old gold emulsion uh, that's still being used and some some were even suggesting that color plus is actually marketed for third world where maybe refrigeration and storage conditions aren't ideal so it's a bit more temperature but well, uh, less temperature sensitive Kodak gold is not so sensitive i, I know yeah, I, I since okay they're all commercial films yeah. so i think they are quite hardy by nature yeah. and being commercial films they be stored in a variety of conditions yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know how true that, that post that I read is, but I thought it was just something interesting uh, and worth pointing out. So something out. else that he was telling me, right, is that Color Plus might actually be like the B-grade Kodak Gold. Yeah, I, I, I'm yeah. wondering, like looking at the results, yeah. whether uh, Color Plus is maybe, maybe Kodak produces yeah. film as a batch. Everything that meets a certain spec becomes Kodak Gold. Yeah. Maybe the film that doesn't become, uh, doesn't meet the spec requirements or veers off slightly may become Color Plus, who knows? Yeah, because the, the process is a continuous one, so mm. I'm sure there's some variance mm. um, at the start and, and at the end of the run. Yeah. It, it can't be... It can't be consistent perfect, throughout, you know? yeah. So that's, that's uh, my, I, got, I guess, conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah. uh, unless Kodak comes out and says something, uh, we, we'll never know. We'll never know. Yeah, but otherwise, I think as long as you're shooting any one of these three films, your results are going to be very, very similar. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about... I mean, we're not saying that Color Plus is worse than Kodak no, Gold. No, no, no. It's I, actually almost the same. Yeah, I yeah. think there's two aspects to photography, yeah. the technical and the aesthetic, uh, mm. artistic part. If you like uh, images with more grey, you like pictures that have a little bit more pastel-like look, then of course Color Plus is better. And generally, Color Plus tends to be a lot more affordable than the other two stocks. Yeah. Uh, where we are, gold seems to be more uh, affordable as well compared to Fujifilm 200. Yeah, for some strange reason, Fujifilm 200 is consistently a few dollars more than gold. Yeah, so I if you know. ask me, then yeah. it, it's no-brainer, just shoot yeah. gold, you know, for at least for us, you know. Yeah. But of course, availability of film in yeah. your region and... I mean, whichever cost, you get yeah. at a cheaper price, gold or Fuji 200, you just, just get the cheaper one. Yeah, just get the cheaper one, yeah. shoot it, it should look very similar. Yeah. I honestly think like you don't you don't have to really worry about anything else. If you ask me if I really pixel peep and all that, Color Plus is a bit more yellow forward. I, I guess the yellows are a bit more obvious. Kodak, I think the contrast is a little bit 
lesser and, mm. and the dynamic range might be a little bit lesser also. Yeah, but it's just, as in these, these yeah. could be variances in just scanning, yeah. you know. It, it's, it's very hard to say, you yeah. know. Yeah, so so that's that's why I think uh, that's 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 our TLDR. That's the end. We put the whole debate to rest. I yes. think people can stop making videos on this after yeah. us. Um, because there's no point. You can shoot whatever you want to shoot, right? Yeah. It will come out almost the same. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. much without much editing, actually. Yeah. yeah. So I hope you guys uh, like this film comparison. We're actually gonna go and collect a new film that's been released recently. Maybe we'll put like a teaser right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you like film comparisons that are technical like this, just let us know. Just let us know. Uh, do like this video if you enjoyed it. Yeah. And remember to subscribe. So please uh, give us some support because this endeavor cost us more than 100 bucks yeah. <laughs> just to shoot the film and get it processed and everything. So, but we'll do it for you. Yes, for you. Yes. Yes. And shout out to Wampo Color Center again. Yeah. And okay. it's story for lending us their. Oh, yeah. It's story for letting us, yeah. uh, graciously letting us use their premises for this. Uh, actually, if you notice the images or the area that we shot are very colorful areas, and Eight Story Tree was a perfect location for this. Yeah, so we also picked that place because we can go back and do future tests with different types of films because it's a standard location and yeah. they're not going to change their display we, yeah. soon, I hope. Yeah. Alright? Okay. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Alright, so we got this uh, fresh off the boat here at Eight Story Tree. Uh, it's the highly anticipated Harmon film. I think we're the one of the first few to get it in Singapore. So we're gonna run through some tests with this and see how this uh, experimental film performs. <laughs>